Have you ever wondered what your career would look like after school? In today's program, we have Desmond Ominde with a unique turn in his career. Desmond, welcome to the program. Tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Desmond Ominde. I'm a fashion designer based in Kisumu. Uh, I work for a brand called Bespoke Official. Mm -hmm. Bespoke Official is a tailored, uh, is a tailor maybe company that deals with the tailored outfits. Mm -hmm. uh, we deal with bespoke suits, that is for both ladies and gents. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do these dresses for ladies, the kitenge, and the matching, the matching outfits for couples. Okay. And the corporate shirts and the uh, uniform. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. And so give us a back, a back story. How did you start uh, as a fashion designer? Is it something you studied for, Amakuli and that? Okay. For me, for, for me, passion, fashion is all about. Uh, it's, it's more of passion. Mm -hmm. I started fashion that that is back in school. Eh? Mm -hmm. So that is for it. it there was a transition from high school to college, then now to my 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 life in general. Mm -hmm. So back in high school, I used I was this guy who normally used to put on the blazers mm -hmm. all the time. Being that I was a school captain. Oh, okay. So from there, I went to also college. College, I used to do on mostly suits. Mm -hmm. So most of my friends school inquire, where do you get these suits from? Mm -hmm. So the interest just grew day by day mm -hmm. until uh, when I was out of school, okay. I said, no, let me take a turn mm -hmm. and venture into my passion. Okay. So it has been a transition, mastering the craft, Learning, learning the craftsmanship, how to stitch, mm -hmm. and how to do, how to source for my fabrics. Mm -hmm. Yes, till now. Wow, mm -hmm. you've talked about taking a turn. What did you turn from, and now into fashion design? Yes, I, I did uh, applied biology. Okay. Yes, and, and some, some and, and uh, human resources. Uh huh. So when I was in school, I was this biology guy who is so much in love with fashion. Okay. So in, in most cases people used to wonder what am I doing in a biology class. In a biology, biology class, class. Yeah, yeah, true, yeah. true. So the passion in me grew day mm -hmm. by day because how I used to put on. Mm. It really influenced me, me to join fashion and design. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So after school I said let me now venture into this. Okay. Yeah. Well this field is mostly dominated by women. So how 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 do you decide how did you decide to venture into it as a man? You know, as a designer, mm. you're selling image, okay, and uh, meaning people buy from whatever they see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you're walking outside, outside they are selling the selling the image. Mm -hmm. People will buy from whatever they see. Okay. So from whatever I put on, mm. that is, it made me grieve so much into this. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, let me just do this, despite the fact that ladies are there doing the kitenge and okay, the dresses. Okay, okay. You know, let me be the gentleman now doing the suit. <laughs> it also gives you an advantage, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. So what, what plan do you have for the applied biology that you studied for? At the moment, I have no plans. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Uh, the love, uh, the, the, my love for fashion has really grown so high. Mm -hmm. I really want to take this brand to a bigger level. Mm -hmm. So I really have to focus on this. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. So do you intend to maybe try in the biology department? Am I, you're never going back. And I'm never going back, but I think there is a connection in in between. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because uh, it doesn't matter whatever you learn mm -hmm. in college. Okay. There are some skills that you have to you acquire and also impact in your in your business. Mm -hmm. Because I'm also, despite the fact that I'm doing the stitching mm -hmm. of the clothes, I'm also managing a business. Ah, yeah. Uh, mm. yeah. So the HR management so the part, HR yeah. management, mm -hmm. the communication skills, how do I talk to my clients, how do I serve them best. Okay. Yeah. Ah, that's mm. nice. So you've, you've spoken about Bespoke Official, yeah? What was the genesis of that? So uh, Bespoke Official, one, Bespoke uh, is something tailored. 
-hmm. something crafted from scratch. Mm -hmm. So bespoke, uh, the, the, the term bespoke came from Italy. Mm -hmm. So most of those suits made from Italy, they are bespoken suits. Oh, okay, okay. So something made, you know, in, in Kenya we have, let's say in fashion in general, we have three types of outfits. Okay. We have the bespoke, we have the tailored, mm -hmm. tailored to measure, and off the rack. Mm -hmm. So somebody, somebody who goes to a, a shop to buy any outfit, that person goes off the rack. Mm -hmm. Then made to measure, we take your measurements, then we do according to your measurements. Okay. This book is more of hand stitching that takes time, mm -hmm. and it's very detailed. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love something bespoke, something detailed, something well crafted. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's why I went for bespoke. Wow. Now the official, mm -hmm. now let it more be of official, let it be more of corporate. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about your outfit. What type is it? Is it bis uh, bespoke, yeah? yeah, or is it tailored or off the sh off so, the rack? Well, with, with my case, I normally put on bespoke. Eh? Okay. Yeah, I love something detailed, something form fitting. Mm -hmm. So uh, something that uh, comes well with the body. Mm. Because when you are doing a suit, mm -hmm. there are very many factors to consider. Yeah. I normally call them the three Fs. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is the one, the fabric. The fabric. Yeah. The the feet. The feet. Yeah. F I T. Uh, yeah, the feet. Okay, yeah, okay. And the function. Ah. So uh, the fabric must be right. Mm -hmm. The feet must be right. Mm -hmm. Then you also have to, you know, when you're putting on a suit, there's an intended purpose for it. Yeah. Where do you want to go with this suit? Mm -hmm. That's where the, the function of the suit comes, comes in. Yeah. Ah. And what about this one? Is it the same bespoke? Am I yeah, in this is also bespoke. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a pin stripped suit. Okay. Yeah, these are for corporates. Oh, we normally call them power suits. Okay. So mostly these are guys on the corporate ladder, the lawyers, uh, put on such kind of a suit. Uh, yeah. And what about this? Does a lawyer, can a lawyer yes, wear this? Can a, lawyer do the, a lawyer also can do this. Uh, this uh, the MDs, the directors, they okay. can also put on such kind of a suit. Wow. Yeah. So you've talked about uh, doing suits, doing kitenges and uh, the corporate wear. Yeah. Why did you choose to do that type of uh, fashion instead of different other kinds? Okay, one, uh, I love what I'm putting on. Mm -hmm. Then most of people really appreciate whatever I'm You're putting wearing, on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if somebody can buy whatever I'm putting on, mm. then why should I make it perfect? Okay. Why should I not produce the product uh -huh. myself? Uh -huh. yeah. So I normally sell whatever I can do mm -hmm. perfectly. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's this thing, and there's money involved. Is it the same case with you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, some little money, though it doesn't really matter. Anybody can put on a suit, mm -hmm. depending on where you're going with it. Okay, yes. okay. Mm. I love how you've touched on the, the maybe the, the what? The, you said the printed lines. Yeah, How did the, you call them? The pin strip. The pin strip. strip yeah. where, did you, where do you source that material from? Okay, in, right now, most of our, our we, have, we have locally, we source locally. Mm -hmm. Then uh, most of our, also our, these the high end suits, we get them from Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So we have a dealer who sells these Italian pin strip kind of fabrics. Okay. Uh, so we outsource. Mm -hmm. uh, then others we also get from Kisumu here mm -hmm. uh, locally. So what is the process of you getting the material to producing this kind of outfit? So most of these are on order. Mm -hmm. So maybe so meaning a client has to walk in, mm -hmm. we take him through our fabrics. Okay. After the selection, and we are, we have agreed on the design and uh, the kind of uh, outfit that, you want, that he or she wants, mm -hmm. I'll make a order. Okay. Uh, which will take around two to three days. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then there are these eye hand suitings that uh, now we also have to link with our suppliers from outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are some suits that we have to import also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how long do I after making my order? How long will I wait to get my suit? So if it's a uh, made to measure, mm. that is within a week. Okay. Then if it's a bespoke suit, mm. then that is uh, four weeks. That is uh, one month. Oh, because of the shipping. Yeah, because of the the process. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. And how is the market in this industry of yours? We are trying, despite the fact that uh, yeah, there's a lot of competition here and there. Mm -hmm. There are also other designers trying to do their craft. Mm -hmm. But we are trying. You are trying. Yeah, we are trying. We are trying to push the brand so hard. So what makes you stand out? So uh, one thing, 
I will say I'm authentic. Okay. Yeah, I'm really authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, I've mastered the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, I know how to deliver to each clientele. Okay. If it's a corporate, I know the kind of a suit that I'll deliver to a corporate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then, I really, I really love quality. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure whenever I'm doing a suit, mm -hmm. despite the fact that uh, it's well tailored, it must be a quality fabric. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And uh, it is rumored, mm -hmm. it is rumored, this mm -hmm. is not a, a sure thing, but mm -hmm. it is rumored that one woman has a national suit, your suit is to care perfect. Is it the same case with you, especially for the trousers? Yes, for the trousers. Uh, okay, in general, I do think I think uh, men are all are very creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are very passionate about what they are doing. Okay. Uh, so you just have to be keen. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm very much keen whenever whenever I'm doing my craft. Mm -hmm. So you just have to come out perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When uh, I'm as a lady, when mm -hmm. I come to you for a suit. How often do you, like most ladies mm -hmm. wear suits, but maybe skirt suits yeah. and trouser suits, mm -hmm. but not this kind. So do you get market for that? Yes. There are some ladies that are, that embrace uh, tailored suits. Eh? Mm -hmm. I think we have some clients also that are, because there's ladies at the corporate ladder, mm -hmm. the lawyers. So we also have ladies that we do for them the suitings, mm -hmm. even the official dresses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is there a difference between the two clients, the male client and the female client? Because yeah. maybe there's, there might be something different that you do for the ladies that maybe the men don't yeah. get that. The only difference, okay, fabric, fabric, there's a slight difference in terms of fabric. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, ladies, they tend to like these soft fabrics mm -hmm. and that can bl blend well with their body. Okay. And like men, mm -hmm. men, most of the gents, they, they love these hard fabrics. Mm -hmm. uh, then... Uh, there's also a difference in terms of cut. Okay. Uh, you know, with the with the, with the, with the gents, you can do a two cut at the back for suit. Mm -hmm. With a lady, you can't do. Is there a way you can show it to yeah, me yeah. through the suit? <laughs> so, like this <laughs> kind of a suit, uh -huh. it has two cuts. Eh? Uh -huh. It has two cuts at the, oh, at, so at the back. Okay, okay. So that makes the difference. Uh -huh. uh, then, uh, with the ladies, mm. you can just put one cut. Eh? Uh -huh. or, or in most cases, you don't put any. Then even with the with the sleeves, it's kind of different. The shaping of the bust, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, wow. it's different. So how how is the reception of the community towards the work you're doing? When I, when I was starting, mm -hmm. uh, most of uh, they say my relatives, mm -hmm. uh, my parents, they never embraced it. Eh? Mm -hmm. Maybe they thought after going to school, then why should I? Even like, so make sure that someone applied biology, and then they, you know. Why should I do fashion again, be a tailor, sitting uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. At, at a room, mm -hmm. doing the tailoring job? Mm -hmm. But with the time, they started now embracing it. Okay. At, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's all about uh, the value of whatever you are doing. Mm -hmm. So when they saw the value that now I'm in town, mm -hmm. and they are not paying for my bills, and I can do one, two, three for yeah. myself. Yeah. Now they say, okay. You can also try that, mm -hmm. but if you case, in case you fail, <laughs> you, you just go back to where you started, yeah? Going, yeah. Mm. yeah. And do you have maybe partners that support you or a team that you work with in the organization? Yes, uh, at the moment uh, we are four. Mm -hmm. uh, that is three tailors mm -hmm. plus me. Mm. So uh, at the moment I'm doing the technical part. Okay. Uh, then also I also may, I make sure that I plan for everything that is being done at the shop, mm -hmm. the designs, the cuts, and I also supervise. Mm -hmm. Then I make sure that I also I deliver the clothes. So my, my, my major role is to manage the business and to make sure that the end product mm -hmm. is well done. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, what achievements have you made uh, since you started? When did you start? It's a process. Let me say... Professionally, I've done it for three years. Mm -hmm. uh, then I start, When I started, that was back then when I was in college, though it was not that serious. Mm -hmm. So professionally, that is three years. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been in the... I've been, Kisumu, I've been here for around three. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what achievements do you feel you've made in as you're doing this? Do you know, when I, when I started, uh, the clientele base was, that, was, was not that... Uh, Grown, mm -hmm. 
then uh, I didn't have the machines and everything. Okay. Yeah, I was just working alone, mm -hmm. doing, doing my craft. So we have grown to a point where we you now have, you know, have these electric machines. Oh. We can do our own production. Okay. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting. But are there any milestones that you have encountered while in this uh, field? That, and how did you encounter, uh, maneuver them? Yes, uh, with the fashion, our biggest problem is capital eh? mm -hmm. when starting. How do you get these machines? How do you rent a space? Mm -hmm. How do you get these clients? Mm -hmm. Then how do you get quality fabrics? Mm -hmm. So it becomes a challenge if you cannot have money to do all of these. Mm -hmm. uh, fashion uh, in Kenya, fashion industry, let's say in Kenya, mm -hmm. has, not, has, has not grown that big. Okay. We just have an image, but not that fashion, but not a bigger industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the major problem, we don't have the products. Okay. Uh, so we have to, we are importing everything. That's why even the cost of production is very high. Mm -hmm. To make a suit, to make a, you get these off the rack suits are very cheap than tailored made suit. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the cost of production. Have to import the fabric, have to import the, the, and the accessories. So mm -hmm. the only thing that is available in Kenya or even in Kisumu is the labor. Okay. So everything we are importing. Mm -hmm. So it becomes now very, very hard to make these outfits and uh, even the the production itself. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let me ask you this, if you were to be given a representation in the fashion industry to make a change, yes. what change would you make in society towards this industry? One, I think the, the government, uh, if uh, I was a representative, mm -hmm. I'll focus on the products. Okay. Yeah, so if Kenya can produce their own products, meaning we can produce our own fabrics, mm -hmm. We can we have our garments here locally, mm -hmm. meaning the cost of production will will be will be will be low. Mm -hmm. So we'll embrace by Kenya. Okay. So meaning most of our meaning most of our clientele will appreciate all our all our garments and products. Okay. So if we can push hard so that the government at least can lower the cost of production for us, mm -hmm. at least we can get these garments locally mm -hmm. at a cheaper price. It can be much better. And uh, about the family, the support that your family were a bit skeptical in what you're doing right now, is it the same case or uh, they've taken a new turn? Yes, I really, first, I really want to appreciate my mother. Okay. She was very supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, she didn't mind the fact that uh, I went off mm -hmm. <laughs> from mm -hmm. whatever I studied. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was starting, blessed me and told me now my son if you want to do this then just go and do it okay uh, give me some of his old fabrics mm -hmm. you go and try <laughs> this one out uh -huh, so i could uh -huh. make some clothes for my sisters and my brothers so mm -hmm. that they can at least see so when i when my mother when i made a, a first dress for my mom and she said it's okay now i felt like no yeah i think i, I can now do for for clients so so Mm -hmm. So my mom has been supportive mm -hmm. here and they are helping me when I, whenever I'm mm -hmm. both uh, through advices. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. and speaking from your experience, maybe there may be a young person out there who has studied something different mm -hmm. and wants to venture into a different thing and they are afraid to let their parents or their family support to know that mm -hmm. let me go this way. So how, how can they deal with that? So, okay, in, in most cases, uh, let's say the biggest problem that uh, we youths have, eh, we don't have the audacity. Okay. The audacity to start. Mm -hmm. We have to, most of us want to be pushed. Mm -hmm. But my advice is that uh, if we can step out eh, and start from, from the little that we have, you don't have to wait to get the capital and everything. Once you have the idea, just keep on pushing. Okay. It will grow with time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And what about the family that is telling you, no, 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 thank you? Uh, with the time, uh, <laughs> they will appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe uh, family will only see the benefit in terms of now when there's money in it. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're just telling them to be humble, let, let us push the brand. Mm -hmm they will see the bigger picture in the future. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. And uh, so how do you plan to sustain Bespoke Official into the future? 
So, uh, to sustain a brand, mm. it's all about how you market the brand. Okay. So, uh, one, you have a specific target clientele that you, uh, we are, we are, we want to venture in. Mm-hmm. So, we want to venture into the corporate ladder. So, okay. meaning we want to do most of corporate outfits. Mm-hmm. So, meaning uh, we want to push our brand both uh, in the social media, mm-hmm. on the ground. So, it's all about marketing, social media platforms, yeah, yeah. And uh, any future plans to expand the business, maybe? Yes, there are future plans. Mm-hmm. We are, uh, at the moment, we are, at, uh, we, are a, we are a group of four. Mm-hmm. So maybe in future, we'll ven- we'll, maybe in future, we can venture into now uh, other channels of distribution. So mm-hmm. maybe Bespoke can grow. We can have other channels in other counties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that at least the brand, people can embrace the brand in the other different areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, seeing that you have been here for five years, yeah, what uh, strategies maybe would you give someone who's yet to start or who's now starting in the fashion design industry, and maybe you can tell them, Appa, this this don't go this way, go this way. What such things? What can you say? I have only two things. Eh? One, mm-hmm. be patient. Mm-hmm. Then two, be authentic. Mm-hmm. Uh, let the drive comes from you. Mm-hmm. Let it be him built. Don't copy from anybody. Okay. Yeah. So how can we get your services? Nikitaka Suti, where should I find you? So we have a workshop in Lolue. Mm-hmm. That is our, uh, on our way to Kenyari. Mm-hmm. So you can get us also through our social media platforms. Mm-hmm. We are at uh, in Facebook, that is Taylor Kisumu, mm-hmm. or Best Official, mm-hmm. or Kisumu Expert Tailors. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Or you can also reach me through my personal page, okay. through my personal account, that is this one on Monday. This one on Monday. Just yeah, that? That, yeah. Oh. Mm. And so being a young person who's using art and fashion to drive your career, what can you tell a young person out there who feels like, I have a passion for this, but there's, there's a milestone that I need to cover so that I can get there? What can you tell them? So, w- one thing that I'll advise, him or her, mm-hmm. uh, when we are starting, it might be very hard, mm-hmm. yeah, because maybe of the challenges of the capital. And, but once you have the passion, you mm-hmm. want to start, just get it going. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't hold back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The little you get, just plow back into the business. Mm-hmm. In the time, it will, it will be better. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any last words? <laughs> uh, one, uh, uh, being in Kisumu, mm. uh, I really want to thank uh, our clients in Kisumu for mm-hmm. being supportive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are here because of them. Mm. Uh, one, uh, we just want to promise them good work, mm-hmm. uh, well crafted outfits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. And do you intend to expand from Kisumu maybe? Yes. Uh, that's why I said earlier that uh, uh, going by if the government can at least is for us, eh? mm-hmm. now we can grow a brand whereby we can have different channels of distribution, okay. uh, so that at least we can do mass production. Mm. Mass production in that I can now produce even suits, mm-hmm. can produce dresses mm-hmm. and sell them. Mm-hmm. So mean somebody in Nairobi can put on bespoke suit from Kisumu. Yeah. Somebody in even as far as Kukana, yeah. Mbasa can put on my product. Yeah. So at least I can have my distribution channels, mm-hmm. store my products in different, different places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then in the time, we also grow at Pakatun International. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you didn't mention is uh, as you completed campus mm-hmm. and you wanted to now learn the art of uh, fashion designing, where did you get the training and uh, was it free or did you have to input some money onto it? <laughs> You know, in Kenya, nothing comes for free. Okay. So when I was done, I, I talked to my mom. Uh. And then she gave, me, she, she told me to look for somebody who can train me, mm. but only at a cheaper price mm. because uh, she couldn't afford you now to, again to train, uh, again to pay for me another fee for something that <laughs> mm. she, uh, she she didn't plan for. Mm-hmm. So I went to somebody. I talked. Uh, he was uh, just a local tailor. I talked to him. We agreed, we agreed that uh, I will take around uh, eight months. Eight I, months. Uh, but uh, by the time 
at four months I was already done. So I saw there's no need of sitting back here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let me go do my thing. Wow. Yeah, so I had to pay him some little money and there. Mm. Then he trained me. Wow. Yeah, so after, after four months I was out. Okay. So I perfected my craft when I was outside now. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You've motivated me to do something more. Even after my degree, I should, uh, mm-hmm. you know, expand my horizon. So thank you so much for coming. I've loved your presentation. I've loved your dresses, your suits, and it's amazing. I may be your customer soon <laughs> enough, yeah? He has said it clearly. It's about passion. Be authentic. Have the audacity to go after what you want and don't rest. Don't trust where you are and say, okay, now this is where I am at. I cannot move. No, you can move and you can expand your horizons however much you want. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis. See you next time. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it.